Hello and welcome back to my Unreal Engine C++ tutorial series. In this tutorial we're going to be working with C++ UI and custom data assets to implement our inventory system. At the end of this tutorial you're going to be able to create an inventory system where you can pick up items, open an inventory, and drop them. This implementation is very simple, but it will give you the foundations to be able to expand on it however you see fit. Also, if you're wondering about my weather, I'm using a plugin off the Unreal Engine Marketplace called Ultra Dynamic Sky. I highly recommend it if you're serious about shipping an indie game and want to cut down on your development time. It is highly customizable and easy to use. If I were to recommend one plugin to a new Unreal Engine developer, it would probably be Ultra Dynamic Sky. Now, on to the tutorial. Say we're a character running around in Unreal Engine, and we find an object that we want to pick up. How do we go about adding it to our inventory? Your first thought might be to just make the object invisible and keep a pointer in our inventory to that same object to spawn it back in later when we need it. But the problem with that is that if we ever change levels or restart our game, when we try and retrieve that item from our inventory, the same object is no longer allocated and it will crash our game. Okay, so what if we just copy the entire object into our inventory? This is generally not a good practice, and Unreal Engine makes it difficult for us to do this anyways, so we're just going to have to use a better method. To make our inventory system, we're going to be using three classes. An item data class to store the needed info to construct our items, an item database to store an array of item data definitions, and our player character class will have a data structure containing our item data to represent our inventory. First thing we're going to do is create all of our classes. So open up your project, make a new class, and search for the class user widget. We're going to be creating two separate classes for our inventory UI. One of them being the inventory widget and one of them being an inventory entry widget. After you've created the two UI classes, we're going to make another class of type data asset and call it item database. Just as a side note, this tutorial assumes that you've completed the other three tutorials that I have on Unreal Engine C++. The other three tutorials cover basic player movement and interaction, so that's what we're going to be using to interact with our items today. In your item database header file, add in a forward declaration for the item class, then create a new struct called fItemData. This will be the struct that holds the data needed to construct each item. Let's add a operator overload for this comparison operator so that we can use fItemData in T arrays. Then we are going to add only two other members to keep this simple an item name, and a class. A class, or uclass, is a special type in Unreal Engine that we can use to construct items at runtime. In this t subclass of variable, we're going to be storing the blueprint children classes for our items so that the engine knows exactly what item we want to create. The only thing we're actually going to have in our item database class is a t array of type f item data called items. For our inventory UI, we're going to be using something called a list view, and in order to add an item to a list view, it needs to be a child of uObject. So let's make a new class called uItemUIObject that is a child of uObject. And it is going to have one member, and it's just going to be an item data. Next, let's code our inventory widget. So add in your item database include and a forward declaration for a list view. Then add in a function called refresh inventory that's going to take in a const reference of a inventory T array. For our list view member, we need to add this into U property, meta equals bind widget. This binds the widget blueprint variable to our actual C++ variable so that we can communicate between the two. For our CPP file, let's add in the include for a list view. Then for our refresh inventory function, first let's clear the list items in our item list. Then for each item data in our past and in inventory, we're going to be creating a new UI object. This is how you create new objects in Unreal Engine. You don't use the default C++ new keyword. This ensures that everything is tracked by Unreal Engine's garbage collection system. Next, we assign the item data to our UI item data, and then add the UI item to our list. For our inventory entry class, let's add in an include called iUserObjectListEntry. Add in a couple forward declarations and ensure that this class also derives from iUserObjectListEntry as well as uUserWidget. This allows our class to be used as a list entry in a list view. Now let's override the function native on list item object set. 
This event is called whenever this entry is added to a list. Now let's add in a couple variables, one defining the item name and another defining the drop button. And let's make a method called drop item and tag it with u function. A method marked with u function means that it can be added to a dynamic delegate. For our C++ file, let's add in our includes and write our implementations for our methods. Since native on list item object set comes from I user object list entry, we can't just use the super type def. We have to specify which parent class we're calling the function from. First, let's cast our list item object into a U item UI object, then set our item name text in our entry to the item name in the item UI object, then clear our on click delegate of all previous bindings, then add a dynamic calling drop item. In our drop item function, we're going to get a reference to our player character, then get a reference to our item data object from our list item object. Then we're going to call the spawn actor function, remove the item from our inventory, refresh the inventory, then clear the delegate again. Player character doesn't actually have inventory or a publicly accessible interact vector end at this point, but we're going to code that in in a moment. For our player character class, once again, add in your includes and forward declarations. Add in the interact vector end variable to store the endpoint of our interact. Then add in the UI variables necessary to create our inventory widget variable. And then an item database variable. Ideally, this database should be stored somewhere different, like a game instance subsystem. But this implementation is just to show you how things work. Lastly, create your inventory variable. If I were to make this system more complex, I would make this a tmap instead of a t array so that I could have a count associated with each item data. But once again, this is a simple implementation designed to help you understand how things work. So we're going to leave it like this for now. For the last coding portion of this tutorial, we're going to be coding in the ability for our player to open up our inventory and pick up items. In begin play, create your inventory widget, add it to the viewport, and set its visibility to collapsed. In this interact check code here, make sure that interact vector end is a public variable in the header and not just a local variable defined in this function. In our interact function, let's check if our interact hit result is an item actor. Then let's access our items in our item database and call the find by predicate function and pass in a lambda. This lambda will check if the classes match up in the database and the item you just interacted with, and then return the correct item data. And place that data into our inventory and destroy the actor we just interacted with. For our toggle inventory function, we're gonna be checking if our inventory widget is visible. And based on that, we're gonna be setting its visibility, refreshing the inventory, and setting some camera control parameters as well as showing our mouse cursor. Also, I forgot to mention that I'm toggling this inventory via the same enhanced input subsystem that we've been using the past three tutorials. I bound it to the key Q, but you can do whatever you want with that. Now there's only a couple things left to do, one of them being creating our actual assets. Create an inventory entry widget blueprint. Create at least one text block and one button and name them according to how you name them in your C++ file. In this case, I name my text block to item name and my button to drop button. Now create another widget blueprint whose parent is inventory widget and then create at least one list view, named the same as the list view you created in your C++ file once again. Mine is called item list, and then set the entry widget class to your inventory entry widget blueprint. Now it's time to create your item database. Create a new data asset of type item database. In this item database asset, this is where you'll be defining your items. You can click add and add as many new items as you want to your database. And right now we only have a name and a class to construct the item in the world, but in a more serious implementation, you could have many more properties here, such as an item value, a description, maybe an icon for UI. Add a couple items here for testing purposes. And don't forget to go to your player character blueprint and set all of your U property variables. Now, if you did everything correctly, you should be able to hop into the game, pick up items, open your inventory, drop them, while this system works, I don't think it's great for a fully functioning game. That's why I recommend for you to improve it in any way you want. Let me know in the comments down below how you plan to improve this system, and I'll try and help you out. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.